you believe in one candidate, the other person believe in the other candidate, and they're all they're, they're fighting to get to get you know the position, and it's just a matter of who's gonna be the smartest. And with uh, Lucifer, the fallen cherubim, uh, he's very smart. He's gonna win, and Christ gonna abdicate the the you know the rights of the planet. He's gonna resurrect his people, have established his kingdom that lasts for uh, ever and ever. God won't be able to destroy him because it would be against against God's uh, the Creator's nature to destroy it. Lucifer in the fire. Beside that, he said, uh, spirits now, even spirits, have the capacity now to outlive fire. He says, you don't believe it, go to India or, or, or some of those uh, countries where they have uh, uh, fire walkers. And it's done by the power of the demon spirits. These people are energized by demon spirits so they can walk on those hot coals without burning themselves. And this is what the high priest said. And he says, if they you want to use uh, fire, they can use it. It's not going to burn anybody. So that's the way, that's the way they believe. Once so they this, believe. this high priest was almost talking to your group in an evangelistic fervor. Oh, yeah, because he figures that uh, he's going to be one of the higher-ups in, in, the, in the great kingdom. Okay. So. Now, of the group that was there that night, 60, 70 people, I think you've mentioned before. Yeah, it varied. How many of those were people who were hardcore members, and how many of them were new inductees? Well, we, were only, we were the only two uh, youngsters, you and, you and your friend. And how old were you at that time, Roger? I was about uh, 20. 20 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah, 20 years Did old. you have a feeling of awe over the fact that you had been chosen? Yes, in a way. And then I, I got thinking about this. When am I going to have to pay the price? The cost. My parents had brought me up like this. If you get involved with evil, you're going to reap what you sowed. So you want to uh, be upright in life. And if you associate with evildoers, they'll probably lend you in jail or somewhere else that you wouldn't want to be. So you, there's always a price to be paid. So you had that little something yeah. maybe instilled by your mother yeah. and father a long time ago that kept you from yeah. making that full commitment. Now, one of the things that uh, really amazed me and... and uh, shocked me and made me sick at heart. It's when the priests uh, talk about uh, Christian idolatry. What is Christian idolatry? The priest mentioned that word. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us what he said, Roger. He said that Christian idolatry is the, the, the most grandiose or great deception that has ever been brought up upon the uh, human family upon mankind. And he says, in, and he boasted, that demon spirits are continually defiling Christian churches through the avenue of necromancy by using a form of spirit worship that involves hundreds of millions of Christians into idolatry without their being aware of it. Now, what is necromancy? Describe ne or define necromancy for me. Their belief, popular belief of necromancy, is to conjure the spirits of the dead. So that you can speak with someone who has died. Right. Like the seance that you originally went to mm -hmm. was the practice of necromancy. Yeah. Now, the priest says that the su this super deception is brought about in only one way. Through the deceptive belief that man has an immortal soul that lives on after death. And he said that constitutes idol idolatry through necromancy. So he says there are hundreds of millions of Christians that are practicing idolatry. What do you think? They're glorifying God. <laughs> See? Because they believe that the soul is immortal. Yeah. They may not be talking to the yeah. supposed spirits of the dead. Oh, yeah. Contrary to popular belief, necromancy does not consist of conjuring the spirits of the dead. The reason being that man is totally mortal and does not possess an immortal soul. So who are they talking to? He says... The friendly demon spirits that have always found over the centuries great delight in impersonating in apparitions, departed loved ones, and persons of great renown. Now, friendly demon spirits. Friendly demon spirits. Are there more than one kind of demon oh, spirits, yeah. mm -hmm. Roger? Well, there's three main divisions, and then there's divisions within those divisions. You have the friendly demon spirits that seem to have uh, the finesse and the refinement and the... Uh, they're not upset about what happened when they were thrown out of heaven, from what I gather. Then you have the warriors. 
They like to bring misery and destruction in the lives of people. Then you have the oppressors. And the oppressors are, are the real wicked spirits that, that hate God with all of their, the Creator with all of their might. You know. So he went on explaining. He says, now, necromancy is in reality a belief, a religious belief. People believe that the dead have entered into a higher state of existence than they had when they were alive. Also, that they are in a position and have the capacity to help the living here on earth. See? Then he said, is, he says, this is where things get really interesting. He said, according to the great master, a person does not have to supposedly call upon the spirits of the dead to receive help, you see, to be involved in the necromancy. All he needs to do is to believe in life after death. Because he said, necromancy is the belief that Man is a human, uh, as a human being, as an as immortal soul. So anybody that believes that man has an immortal soul is involved in necromancy. It's that simple. That's the way he explained it. Hmm. Yeah. So how does that <coughs> constitute idolatry? By people believing that they are either talking to the saints you see, the spirits of the dead, dead saints, or a dead relative, or a dead person of some type. And you take, for instance, like uh, Loretta Lynn. She owes, she says on national television, and uh, I have the data on it, that, that, that I heard it myself. She said that she was made successful in her singing career by a dear friend of hers that was the same age as she, and died when she was 18 years of age. And Loretta was trying to get into the, the singing world, you know, but it, it, it would, she says, I had no success at all. Until one night I was sitting in bed reading a book. And she says, who walks right through the wall but my, my friend, the spirit of my friend. And she says, Loretta, I'm going to make you a very famous person in singing Western uh, country music. And I will be with you all the time. Trust me. And she says, uh, she had a big concert one once, and she was coming down with this bad cold. And she thought that her voice was, was going to give. She talked to her spirit and felt, felt that she was going to be helped. And she got in the, on the stage, and she s started to sing, and right in the middle of where she really needed uh, the power, no power at all. And her spirit friend tapped her on the shoulder and, said, and started to sing for her. She said, her voice went through me. The power. See. And you saw this in a television documentary? Tele yeah. yeah. This was, I believe, 1976 it took place. Now, the priest explained that when people believe in uh, this business, they are actually opening themselves to be completely deceived by demon spirits because it gives the demon spirits an opportunity to impersonate the dead, see? And for people to believe their lives. And the priest says that thrills the, it, first of all, it says it brings the great master the respect and the reverence that is due to his great name. And it makes all the other spirits exceedingly happy because they are the ones that have worked to lead people to believe in life after death. See? And they rejoice. Also. And that's the extent of... Uh, what Christian idolatry is all about. Friendly spirits, just to digress for just a moment, you mentioned three different categories, and the friendly spirits are the ones that love to in, impersonate oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a being, a historian yeah. or something. In yeah, your they specialize in that. In your experiences in the praise services or in the worship room or the other places where you were, any of the places you were, mm -hmm. did you ever witness a, an event where necromancy or even uh, something that would be popularly called channeling today mm -hmm. took place where you actually heard the voice of someone in response to someone's oh, yeah. questions yeah a number of times but there was one time in particular that fascinated me because <clears throat> um, it was unique in, in one way the priest told us that there was a French historian that was affiliated with Montreal uh, University of Montreal which is a French university, and the English university is McGill. 
So the University of Montreal is the French uh, 